Welcome to the last part of our Worms Light Destruction tutorial series. So far we've seen how to create a wizard character that can move around and shoot exploding slimes. We've also seen how we can generate our collisions from an image at the start of the game and how we can update it in real time as we go. If you haven't seen those videos, check them out. Today we'll look at the last piece of the puzzle, which is hiding the parts of the terrain that have been destroyed. So, as I'm sure you'll remember, our destructible node has a viewport. When the destruction node initialized, we took a copy of our parent sprite and we drew it into the viewport. We've also set up our viewport with a clear mode of never and an update mode of once. We want to make a circle of destruction that gets removed from our viewport whenever an explosion happens. Then we want to tell our parent sprite which bits to show and which bits to hide. To manage that, our parent sprite needs a custom shader, so we'll start there. Taking our parent sprite, under canvas item material, we have a shader material, which has a shader that exists over here under source, destruction, parent material shader. If you don't know anything about shaders, don't stress. I'm a complete noob at this as well, and this one's only 10 lines long. The first thing in here declares this as a canvas item shader type. Shaders come in three flavors, canvas item, particle, and spatial. Canvas item is used for all the 2D things, so it's the one that we want. Particles are obviously for particle systems, and spatial is for 3D nodes. We are a canvas item shader because we're dealing with 2D. Our next thing is a destruction mask. Uniform means that it's a variable that can be set from outside the shader. In our case, our destructible script is going to send our viewport into here. Sampler2D is the type of the variable. We name it destruction mask and we give it a hint so that it's completely black by default. Next up, we have our fragment function. As far as I understand, the two most common shader methods are vertex, which allows you to move points around, and fragment, which lets you color them in. Basically, our fragment function gets called for every single pixel on our sprite. The first thing we do in here is get our original color. The texture method reads a pixel from the given texture at the specified UV coordinates. Texture and UV are special variables given to us by Godot, which refer to the texture of the sprite and the coordinates of the pixel that the fragment function is currently running for. So we grab our RGB and alpha channels from the sprite texture and we save it as our original color. So then we do the same thing, but we read from our destruction mask, which gives us the destruction maps color. Finally, we set this color variable, which decides what color the pixel will display. We're just taking the red, green, and blue from our original color. And then we take the alpha of the original color and multiply it by the alpha of our destruction mask. Our destruction mask is going to be either a 1 or a 0, depending on what the destructible viewport sees. If the viewport sees something that should be transparent, it's a 0. So when this is multiplied against our original alpha, it'll make pixels invisible. So we've got this parent shader, and if its destruction mask has something transparent, it won't render those pixels. Now we just need to figure out how we're going to set the destruction mask. To do that, let's go back to our destruction script. When one of our slimes explodes, this destroy method is called. In the last video, we saw that we create a thread to destroy the collision geometry. We'll skip past this for now as well. So we wait until our visual server's frame post draw, which means that our viewport has been rendered. And then we call republish sprite. So our viewport renders, it gets drawn into our sprite, we take whatever's drawn in the sprite and load it into an image texture, and then that gets passed to our parent shader. So we know that if something in the viewport is transparent, that shader means that our parent sprite won't render those pixels. Up until now, we've been ignoring this circle node that's a child of the viewport. This circle is used to mark things in the viewport as transparent. So if we take a look, this is a plain old node 2D and it's got a very simple script attached. Godot has a special draw method as part of nodes, which lets them handle their own custom display logic. I think the intended purpose is to let people make custom UI controls and stuff like that. 
We're using it here to draw a specific shape without needing a texture. In this case, we're using a helper function that lets you draw a circle at the given position with a given radius and in a given color. We're not setting our position. We're not specifying a position, which means the center point of the circle that we draw will be our node's global position. Our radius here is defined as a variable and it gets set from our reposition method. We're using black as our color, but it doesn't actually matter as long as the color that you're using has an alpha value of one. So this draw method is called internally by Godot, but only when the circles update method is called. So we need some way of calling update on our circle. This is where our reposition method comes in. Reposition takes in a position for the center point of our explosion and a radius to define how big the explosion is. All we do is set our visibility to true because it's hidden by default. We set our global position, which will be used as the center point in our draw circle. We define our radius, which is also used by draw circle. And then we call update, which after everything else Godot does, we'll call our draw method. So now we've got a circle representing the explosion. It's drawing in the right place and the right size in our viewport. But we need to set the alpha to zero for that circle so that it can be passed through to the parent shader in the destruction map. And if you draw something with alpha on top of something that's already there, you won't see any difference. So our solution here is another shader. If we look at our circle, it has a canvas item material set up with a blend mode of subtract. That means that the circle will be subtracted from whatever it's drawn on top of. So it basically works like an eraser. And if you remember earlier, when we were configuring our viewport, we set it to have a transparent background. Wherever we draw a circle is gonna subtract from whatever's already there. If you've subtracted everything away, you get the background, which is transparent. So the last bit is that our circle needs to have that reposition method called. We skipped over that earlier in our destructible script. In our destroy method, we take the position passed to us from the exploding spline, we convert it into our viewport coordinates, and then we call the reposition method. So this will move our circle, the circle will subtract whatever it's drawn on top of, which will leave us with alpha. We then call our rebuild texture, which simply tells the viewport to change its update mode to update once. So it will draw and then switch back to never update. We wait for the visual server to process all of our viewports so that they've all got a fresh render. And then we republish the sprite, which takes the viewport, passes it to the parent shader as a destruction map. And so everything on that parent sprite with an alpha of zero is not going to render. Putting all that together, we have an explosion that deletes a circle out of our map. So that brings an end to this project. As always, the source code and the assets are linked in the description. Go check it out, remix it, build on top of it, do whatever you want. Hopefully you've enjoyed this project breakdown. We'll catch you in the next one.